Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Cine Scrubs, Where we scrub back through time to see if Hollywood has always had a fetish for samey white dudes. In today's episode, it's 1945, World War II is coming to an end, the UN is being founded, and the highest grossing film is The Bells of St. Mary's. Bing Crosby has returned to reprise his role as Father O'Malley from 1944's Going My Way. Now, what is it with all the priests and nuns? I mean, were they like the Avengers of the early 20th century or something? Bing Crosby's voice is basically a superpower. Fair. Say, are we shooting in black and white or something? Absolutely. I mean, Audiences don't want any of that newfangled Technicolor nonsense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not accurate. Well, I think it's festive. Okay, well, the gag's done now, so let's just switch it back, all right? No, I like it. Well, am I still in charge of editing? I guess. Great. Whoa. Hey, it's laundry day. <laughs> Save me, Bing. I can see you don't know what it means to be up to your neck and nuns. No. Please sit down and I'll tell her you're here. Thank you. That used to be our playground. Oh, over there where that is? Yes. Yes. We had to sell the ground. We needed money to fix our building. They were going to condemn it. Why do they have to have 75 to pass? You would put the standard at 65, Father? Why not? Then why not at 55? Why any grades at all? Why don't we close the school and let them run wild? Maybe. Be better than breaking their hearts. I'm sure that nice little man is going to give us his building. We must pray and keep on praying until... God's will be done. And may God's will be our will. Oh, bells of St. Mary, we all... So they had shitty sequels in 1945. Apparently. I find that really fascinating. I d this was one of my mom's favorite movies. Was it? It was all these completely unrelated plot lines that just happened around each other, and none of which meant anything. Nothing ever went anywhere. There was a lot of non sequiturs. Nothing made sense. They'd start something, and then it would never come back again. My god, there was a cat playing in a hat for what had to be 10 minutes. You know, the original funny cat video. It was in 1945. They didn't have YouTube then, so I guess they need to insert it in their Hollywood blockbusters. There was also, like, a, a another 10-minute sequence where they had a bunch of kids act out a Christmas pageant, <laughs> and it was clearly not scripted. Like, the kids just did stuff. Like, it just felt lazy. It felt like a lazy sequel. It's really, and I don't know, maybe if we've seen Going My Way, it would make a little more sense? Maybe. <sighs> if we'd seen what a, like off-the-cuff, crazy priest. He's a rebel. Bing Crosby could be. Anytime he was rebellious, it was kind of ridiculous. It was. So. There's this whole sequence, right, where this kid gets beat up. Literally, he's just standing there, and this other kid is like, yo, you suck, and beats him up for no reason, and he turns the other cheek. As he's been taught to by the nuns. And Bing Crosby congratulates the kid who kicked his ass. And then you think, like, somehow this is going to come out okay. But what happens next is the nun runs to the store to find a boxing manual to teach the pacifist kid how to fight. The nun learns the error of her ways and teaches the other kid to be violent, too. There was all this other, like, there's this romance happening under the surface with the yeah. nun and the priest. Kind of. Like, it. you're like, are you going? Is this romance? I, mm. It's not explicit, obviously, but there's definitely this undercurrent of they clearly have feelings for each other, but it's platonic. It's, it's chaste, yeah. right? Like, 
they want to tell a romance, but it can't involve sex, I think. So, like, like with, you know, the mother and father and Leave it to Beaver sleeping in different beds or whatever. Maybe it's just the perfect relationship can happen. <laughs> Between a priest and a nun? Because nothing can ever happen. We may be reading too much into this, but it was weird. Yeah, so there's this culture shock in watching this movie. Like on one hand, there's this sort of obsession with chastity, right? That they would think we were really corrupt because like we acknowledge that married people have sex. But on the other hand, literally he beats this kid up so bad he's bleeding and the bully is the good guy in this scenario. So like completely like to me, ass backwards cultural values and it was it was you ran into stuff like that all over that movie another really great pro moment of what it was like to be in the 1940s the nun is diagnosed with tb oh my right and the doctor tells her that she's fine goes to the priest and tells him what's really happening and says you shouldn't tell her It'll make it worse. You should just fire her from her job and move her somewhere else and not explain it to her at Don't all. Don't tell her why! That'll help her get better. She can't be trusted with her own diagnosis. She's too frail. She's a woman. She's a nun. I don't even know where they were. It was like, what? So clearly we have a lot of feelings about this movie, but as to actual data and numbers. There were a lot of women, um, which is what, you know, we thought we might start to find, right? This was uh, just over half women. The lead was still a man, but you know, I, we've seen that actually back and forth since the 60s. It's also another nun movie. So also we've kind of stacked the deck in terms of women. Right, what is it with all the nun movies? I think it's a chastity thing, man. Uh, anyway, in terms of race, as we expected, there was nobody of continues color. Continues to be super white. Not a single person of color. Um, and most of the minorities that we're used to seeing today were not around in great numbers in the U.S. at that time. But there was a healthy black population, which was completely unrepresented. I mean, we don't have a ton of data points so far, but pretty white. There has not been, there's not been a person of color since 1975. And I mean, they didn't have lines. <laughs> it's a very pale town, Hollywood. It's true. Pale. You think in that sun they might get a little color? No. <laughs> Join us next week as we scrub back to 1935 when the highest grossing film was Mutiny on the Bounty. Ooh, is that about pirates? No, it's about the British Navy. Okay, but it probably has a few pirates in it, right? No, but it does have Clark Gable. Is he a pirate? I don't think so. I hate 1935. If you want to watch along with us, it is available on DVD and Blu-ray, as well as through digital rental on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. Let us know how we're doing in the comment section below. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Tumblr. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. And if you leave suggestions on sign-offs, we'll be sure to read them as part of a future episode. So until next time. Every day is a winding scrub. Can't scrub this. Get a scrubby bit closer.